This game started off on a hot tear. The Lakers and the Clippers were in a battle. Alright, I'm cut the BS. I know exactly why you guys are here. And it's not to talk about the game. It's to talk about this here. Yep, this fourth quarter comeback. I had to stop everything that I was doing just to react to this. I'm working on like three or four videos. There's actual work to be done. I'm pretty sure I have a family or something. I don't know. But this right here had to be done. LeBron outscored the entire Clippers team by himself. Now, if that isn't tragic, I don't know what is. Not to be outdone by the Kings, the Clippers felt like they had to be another California team that had to collapse in a historic way in the fourth quarter. This is insane. Mind you, the record for the largest fourth quarter blown lead was set earlier this season by the Sacramento Kings, and this game was just one point off of that. Granted, they did have a little bit more time to come back, but still, I feel like now people are going to roast the Clippers even harder than anybody did for the Kings because let's face it, it's the Clippers. For some reason, there's a soft spot for the NBA community when it comes to the Kings. They're like that forgotten lost franchise and people hope that they find their way at some point and get back to the top of the mountain. And because of the whole Western Conference Finals thing, which I'm not going to get into. But I think part of the reason why a lot of people are so down on the Clippers is because of everything that they did when they first acquired Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Now the basketball world sees them as villains. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think people are actively rooting against them like they did in 2020, but I do think that if something bad happens to them or they're befallen with some ill will, people are kind of like, you get what you deserve. I also think what makes the Clippers a bit of villains in the NBA is the recent acquisition of James Harden. Alone, the Clippers team probably wouldn't get so much hate, but the general view on James Harden was that he shouldn't get another chance because of the way he forced his way out of every place that he's been in so far. And once he got to a contending team, it really seemed like life wasn't fair and you can really just do whatever you want and somehow it'll work out for you. This is offset by the fact that Russell Westbrook was seen as sort of the black sheep and his tenures ended tumultuously, but not by his choice. He always seemed like the scapegoat when it wasn't necessary. So those two opposing forces are working on the Clippers and you have the story of all these hometown kids on the same team trying to get a championship. So you have that going for them. There's just a lot of storylines going on with the Clippers. But even with all of that, I still think that there's a large portion of the NBA fan base that get a little chuckle anytime they see something bad happen to the Clippers. I don't know why, it's just the way it is. There are three things that are inevitable in life, death, taxes, and laughing at the Clippers pain. Meanwhile, the Kings are relieved that they're not the only team to blow a lead so large in the fourth quarter. But how insane is it that this happened twice in the same season? There's been a lot of talks about the NBA trying to do something to adjust the scoring inflation that's been happening over the past few years. And granted that was happening before this game, but I feel like now that this happened with the Lakers and specifically LeBron, people are going to get their pitchforks out and they're going to be like, OK, the league needs to do something about scoring now because the Lakers slash LeBron should not be coming back from huge deficits like this. Another funny side note to this is that this was the Clippers last home game against the Lakers in Staples Center. I'm not calling it that other thing. It's still Staples Center. So this was supposed to be their big send off. It's funny that way. I totally expected the Clippers to have this huge send off, blow out the Lakers, go into their new arena, knowing that the last thing that happened in Staples was that they put the Lakers out. But nope. The exact opposite happened. And not only did it happen, it happened in a way where you thought that the Clippers were going to blow the Lakers out and then 
this happens. A whole 21 point comeback in the fourth quarter. Always like to look at the ESPN or whatever sports site you choose to look at. They have the probability rating that goes up and down as the game goes along. And of course, for this game, the Clippers had a really high probability of winning. It was up to like 98% at some point. And then it flipped just like that. It's all Clippers, Clippers, Clippers. And then you see this little tick right there. That's your heart getting ripped out. But what do you guys think? How do you feel about the huge Lakers comeback in the fourth quarter? Anyway, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you feel so inclined and I'll catch you guys on the next one.